Ciao! Did you know that tables aren't the only option to store data in Snowflake? One of the tools which can be also used for data storage are internal stages. In this video, we'll go through the definition of stage, various types of internal stages within Snowflake, and selecting the most appropriate stage based on different scenarios. Stay tuned. But first, before we start, let's ensure you have a Snowflake account and SnowSQL installed on your machine. If you are unfamiliar with SnowSQL or haven't installed it yet, you can refer to my previous video where I provided a detailed description of this tool with end-to-end -end installation. There are a few ways to store data in Snowflake. One of them are stages. In Snowflake, a stage is a location where data files are stored for loading into or unloading from tables within the Snowflake. Stages serve as a middle layer for data movement between external sources, such as cloud storage, like Amazon S3 or Azure Blob Storage, or client machine, which is, I mean, your local PC, and Snowflake tables, of course. Loading data into a stage is called data staging. When loading data into Snowflake, you typically copy files from a stage into a table. On the other hand, when unloading data, you copy data from a table to a stage for further processing or external storage. In Snowflake, we can distinguish two main types of stages, internal and external. Internal stages are managed by Snowflake, directly associated with Snowflake account and located within Snowflake infrastructure. They are commonly used for temporary storage or for exchanging data within the Snowflake environment. Huge advantage of internal stages is efficiency of loading and unloading, which allows to process multiple files in parallel, which can significantly speed up whole process. In this video, we'll go only through internal ones. However, to give you a little bit of context, external stages are external to Snowflake infrastructure. Typically located in cloud-based storage services like Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage, or Google Cloud Storage. To simplify, you can think of that data within internal stage is stored inside of Snowflake account, while for external stages exist outside of Snowflake. There are three types of internal stages. User stage is dedicated space assigned for every user for personal use, which means that no one else besides that user could see the data on the user stage. User stage gets created with the moment of user creation. The stage cannot be changed nor removed. If you don't want to share the data with anyone else, use user stage. Table stage is dedicated space assigned to every table. It gets created with the moment of table creation. So in this case, it's very similar to the user stage. This stage cannot be changed nor removed as well. It's a good idea to use the table stage when you are loading on or unloading data for a particular table. And the named stage, on the other hand, can be accessible by everyone with sufficient privileges and are not created automatically. It means you can create and drop them anytime you want. Named stages can be used when you want the data to be accessible by other users and the data are not connected to any particular table. There are four main commands which you should know while working with stages. Put allows to upload files into internal stages from client machine, while get allows you to download data from internal stage to client machine. I mean, of course, your PC. With list, you can check all files stored on a stage and with remove, you can delete them. Put and get commands can be used only for internal stages and only with Snow SQL use. However, list and remove works both for internal and external stages and doesn't require Snow SQL. Using internal stages in Snowflake typically involves the following workflows. In first scenario, we use put command to upload data into internal stage from client machine and then copy this data into a table. In reverse situation, we would copy into internal stage from a table and then 
use get command to download data to our client machine. In second scenario, instead of client machine, we use external stage, manipulating data only for copy into command. In demo session, we'll go only through first example, while the second one will be covered in the upcoming video about external stages. Okay, so let's jump into some practical exercises. In this video, I will use the Snowflake extension for VS Code and for simplicity, I have the code already prepared. So to utilize the user stage, um, you can type the at symbol followed by the tilde. And let's start with the listing of the files which are currently on, on our user stage. Here, as you can see, there are two files last modified like a couple minutes ago. Okay, so let's remove those, those files. As you can see, files get removed. Let's list it out once again and query produced no results. It means that the user stage is empty. So let's put those files back again to the user stage. As you can see, I'm using the, the put command, the file location on, on my local PC and and uh, the user stage. The customer CSV got uploaded. Uh, it also got converted to, to gzip. Um, as you can see, you can also check the source size and the target size. Uh, so, so you can see it, it gets converted. Let's put also the dummy JSON. It also got uploaded and, and converted, so that, that's fine. So let's check our user stage once again. And as you can see, those files has been uploaded to the user stage. So let's quickly check if the get command also is also working. So we just type get command. We type the, the stage. In this case, it's it's user stage and also the, the, the location where those files needs to be um, downloaded. So let's run it. Those files has been downloaded successfully. So let me just quickly show you how it works in a practice. I have a bunch of files here, but those two has been just at this second um, downloaded to my to my local PC. So so this this part is working fine. Let's move it away. And now let's check the data how it's how it's actually working. So we'll type the select. We have some 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 symbols here. So mm, to to reference uh, a column in, in a stage, we can use a dollar sign and the, the um, column number. Um, so in this in this case, as you may see, there is something strange here because this data it's the data from the JSON. So every line gets parsed kind of into into a row. And in let's say the second part, there's the the CSV part. So we have selected all the files in this in this stage so the the json the first one is is the json one and the second one is is the csv one so to select only the csv one or just some particular file we can use this um slash symbol and uh, and the name of the file in this case it's customers.csv let's let's run it once again and as you may see there are only um, th there's only um, customers a CSV file um, which which I've selected in this in this case we, we've skipped it the dummy JSON. Okay, so and then the next section um, we would like to select the index and the name from customer CSV. But as you may see in this data, the first row is already uh, a column. Uh, a column name. So if we would like to select this one, it will not work because it's it's the first row. It's it's not the column. The columns are with the the dollar sign and the, and the column number. So it it shouldn't work, right? It's it's not working because um, column name like this doesn't exist. The same case works if we would like to use the select star from the uh, from the, from the stage because. Uh, it, it, it doesn't work either. Um, so to avoid this this situation, at least can quickly check the data if if 
we receive some, some data in the state. But let's create a file format here. And now to create a table from this data to have no issues with this, um, with the first row. We could of course skip it, but, but we would like to put this data into a table in, in, in the future. So we'll use some, some construct here, which I won't explain, but in, in short terms, we are um, reading the schema. Uh, we are inferring the, the, the schema from this, from this particular file, and we'll use the file format to actually read this, um, this table. So let's create this one and the table customers get successfully created. You could also use a create table um, statement here uh, with the more classic way I would say, but in this case, you will need to define all, the, all of the columns with the types. So um, in some cases, this might be better because infer schema for some reason sometimes may not work properly when you have some, some I would say strange data types. But in this case, if we have um, let's say simple data types, then it's much easier, easier to use the, the, this first statement, but the, the second one will work as well. However, you would need to define the, the columns and the data types. So, so it's, I would say the longer version. And now let's copy into the table we've just created with the file from, from this stage or this, the same file format and the this is this one is very important it's matched by column name it's case sensitive and as you can see rows get loaded without any error so let's check this out our table and our table is perfectly created without any issues data are working fine so that's the quickest way to use the internal stage in your organization to reference a table stage, we'll use at symbol followed by the person and the table name. So in this case, it's it's customers. It's the table which we have created in the in the user stage. Uh, so as this table has been created, we can we can check if there is any data on the on the table stage. As you can see, there is there is not. So we can use the existing table to copy that data into a table stage. So in this case, we'll copy data from the customer table into the customer's stage, table stage, of course. So the rows are now the 10. So let's, let's check the table stage once again. And as you may see, there's the one csv.gz file, which is, um, which are just those um, 10 records, which we have uploaded there before. So now let's let's put the, the second part of the customer's data. But right now, instead of uploading it into the user stage, we'll use the um, created the customer table stage. This this file has been has been uploaded to the to this table stage. As you may see, customers two already exist here, and we'll create a different file format than the previous one. It's because the match by column name is working only with the parse header parameter here. And for this exercise, we would like to skip it for a second. So I will create a second um, file format. And it's because to make a select like this, to select this data um, directly from the, from the table stage, but with the usage of file format, um, we are not able to to provide uh, this um, match by column name parameter. So let's run it. And that's the that's the other way. You can also select the the data from from the stage. Um, there is no header as you can see because we have skipped this one. But but the data has been converted and and looks looks fine to to load. So that's the good one to to actually check the data before load. So now we can we can choose in in which way we would like to um, copy this data into the the customer's table. The first one is the the same the same example as for, as for the user stage because we are using the 
CSV inter fi infer file format. With this one, it's it's working fine. Uh, we can check we can check how this this table is looking at this moment. There is 20 records, 10 in the first part, 10 in the second part. They are working good. You could also use um, the the second copy option without the match by column name parameter. Uh, but it's it's the different file format. It's the one we've just created in the table stage section. And as an alternative, you could even use the the copy into customers from the from the query, like the one we've used just right here. So it will work in the same way. You can choose which which one suits you the best. Okay, so let let's move to the named internal state right now. Um, we'll create this. At this stage already with the file format so there will be no need to provide it every single time because it's defined on the on the stage level let's create this one let's list those files to to check how it's working it's working as intended there's there's no data yet um, as you can see we are referring we are referring this stage by at symbol followed by the the stage name Let's put also the customer's CSV file here. And we'll also have the um, people.csv file. But in this case, instead of just putting it into the internal test um, stage, we'll also use the people data directory. Mm, so it will be kind of in the in the directory, but in reality it's just it's, it works more like a like a path. So if we list those files right now, you will see that the customers.csv are in the internal test directory, but the people.csv are kind of in the people data catalog. So if, if we would like to refer only to this catalog, we'll need to also use it, uh, use it right here. So we'll see only the people.csv. And then uh, it works. Uh, pretty much the same as as for the previous examples um, to to get the data from the customers that CSV table mm, will refer it by by this by the slash but for the for the people that CSV as you may guess um, there is no such such file as as within this location so if we'll refer to the um, to the people data directory then we can get the the all the all the files which are within this directory also let's quickly uh use describe stage command to to check other other values um in this stage um what's interesting the most for us it's it's this one is the stage file format so it means that this stage has been defined with the file format. There is also an option to create a stage through the user interface. You can just navigate to the data section, to the databases, choose the database you want. Here I will choose the stage test database, choose the schema, and in the right upper corner, there is the create button. Here we'll just, just navigate to Snowflake manage stages, which in this case are internal stages because there are also external ones. So let's click on this one. And you just simply put the name of the of the internal stage you want. Like for example, Snowflake Ninja stage. And you can create the stage and that's it. So to summarize, internal stages simplify data transfer and management, providing a flexible and efficient way to handle large data set within a solving environment. Let me know in the comments below if you already used the internal stages before. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Ciao.